Bismillahir Rahmanir Raheem Wa ti Allah ti Rasul wa ulul amri minkum and alhamdulillah with a reminder from myself that entering into the last 10 days of it coming in nar inshaAllah in the next day or so opening that gate and that Allah extinguish the, the fire of bad character that trying so persistently to enter into the hearts of people and that Allah clear away the fire of our grave and make it to be a, a space of paradise filled with immense lights and love and the love of Sayyidina Muhammad that comes to fragrant the grave with those beatific lights inshaAllah. Uh, we talked a lot last night about uh, the ithaqah of the khalwa and its realities of going through the bad characteristics inshaAllah. Do you have any questions for tonight? As Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi Wa Alaikum As Salaam wa Rahmatullah What if we keep seeing spiders around us? Is it also bad character manifesting? What if we keep seeing spiders around us? Is it also the bad character manifesting? Yeah, every, every creature has its reality and the spider has an importance in spirituality and in tariqah that when Prophet was going to now open the reality of his heart that was the opening of the hijrah in which Prophet left Mecca to enter towards the reality of Medina al Munawwara which is the city of light and stopped with his beloved friend Sayyidina Abu Bakr as Siddiq into the cave. And the event of the cave and the reality of the cave was guarded by a spider web. As soon as they entered into the cave, a spider came and drew a web on its entrance to guard the reality of Sayyidina Muhammad so that it would appear as if nobody's been in this cave for a long time. And everything has an analogy for us from Divinely Presence that as we are seeking to enter into the cave, into the reality of the heart of Sayyidina Muhammad Many will think that they, what's the importance and what are these people talking about? And those whom Allah guide that if not your relationship with Prophet who are you expecting that's going to come to your service? So we gave example last night, you go to the hospital, who's coming? Are, are people really thinking Allah will appear, astaghfirullah? And Allah said, so well, didn't I, did I send you from Nabiin, Siddiqeen, Shuhadahi wa Salihin and none of those you know and none of those you're, you're asking for help and you just want to deal only with the, the, the Creator of entire universes? You don't have uh, any humility within you to, to be humble about that. So it means all of these realities that people are passing by and think, I don't need anybody but just Allah And Allah said, your creation that is in continuous need of companionship and that, ukunu ma sadaqeen, keep the company of, of the sadaq and truthful. Companionship is our whole way of tariqah. That the tariqah is based on the companionship and the, the guidance and, and the talks and the teachings of realities. The spider represents a reality that for those whom Allah opened their heart to enter and to move towards the love of Divinely Presence and the love of Sayyidina Muhammad then the Ayn Kaboot and then awliya come and inspire, oh Ayn Kaboot that's interesting that it was important enough for Allah to name an entire surah, Ankabut. So if it was a creature that had no significance, why is Allah naming it? And that's the 29th surah. So later in your tariqah life you come that the Sirat Alam Jalala 
is the whole reality towards Divine Presence. So the secret of the Lam Alif and its relationship is a key to the Divinely Presence. That's why on the Najm when we draw it's Allah and then La on top and no mind people come and say, how is the Allah on the bottom and the La on top and trying to make their own understanding for it. So no because Allah is teaching Prophet that for dunya bring my name Allah. So the downward is dunya. So for dunya bring my name Allah into this dunya that I'm the owner of this dunya and my oneness is Allah. Tell the mushrikeen that it's not many, it's not all these gods, you watch these television shows and ancient alien and these gods and gods and gods and gods, there's but one God. Whatever anyone else thinks of these other ones they are jinn. Those aliens are jinn, all the races of the Hindu culture were all jinn, that's why they're blue. Your God is not blue, the blue are the jinn. So they worship the jinn and Allah said in Qur'an, how many of them you made them as your saviors and, and your lords because they had supreme power. So Allah giving for Prophet bring my name Ismullah into dunya and teach them that I am the king, I am the supreme, I am the creator and there's not many there's one Allah But that doesn't mean you reach the secret of the heavens, it merely meant you stopped in the many and you agreed to come to one. Now there are outward butparast and there are inward butparast. Outward butparast is following actual statues. Inward butparast are all the desires that are lowered over mankind. So the outward he is completely lost. He found something ridiculous and he bows down to it and rubs it and thinks it has something to help him, neither it can help him nor harm him that which he created with his own hands. This outward butparas there that's completely crazy. Inward butparas, as soon as he takes a path in which to find himself and to find what is his Lord, what is governing him, he finds all his bad character are his idols. Right? You're smoking and you can't smoke, it's an idol for you. Why you don't break it? Break that idol. If they can't, because it's governing them and that's what lordship establishes. We're all asking for Allah to govern us, that Allah's kingdom to govern us, Allah's laws to govern us. But Allah sent Sayyidina Muhammad to teach that know yourself. Who knows himself takes a way of, of his self-recognition and, and self-realization and look to himself with these teachers, he'll find who's his Lord. He'll find what are the attributes that governing him, what are all the vices that are governing him and her. The anger governs 99% of all people. If the anger is governing how you can be submitting to Allah it would be an imperfection in the submission because every time anger comes you're giving more right to the anger than to Allah and that's why anger becomes kufr and disbelief because somebody can become angry and, and harm somebody and completely leave their faith as a result. So it means the tariqah comes to show all of these realities that you have to take a path, you have to destroy all of these internal idols and to destroy all the bad characteristics so that the real worshipness of Allah can be established. So it means then they came to the understanding of Allah, this is just for your dunya. Once you're truly accepting Allah then you're saying, I'm not going to do all these bad things, this is still hat of dunya. And the shaykhs are working on you from lawama to shawarma, from amara lawama. Shawarma and lawama because shawarma you have to be cooked. They come in saying, oh Shaykh I felt ecstatic and I really loved tariqah at the beginning 
Because it was exciting for you, they draw you in like a fish on a hook. But it loses its excitement sometime and become more like you trying to escape the hook. <laughs> like the fish is <laughs> I'm not going <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that's the shawarma part because <laughs> you're reeling. They're reeling you in, reeling you in. Some of the fun, funny and the exciting part has gone <laughs> now, it's just a struggle. And that's what's important, that there is a struggle, you have to fight and you do your zikrs, you do your practices and they're drawing in, drawing in to that reality. When they are bringing the students into the reality, they are now learning how to truly submit to Allah Because how are you going to find Allah to submit to? So that means practice with His servants. When the servants come and teach you then Allah doesn't like that, don't do that. Allah wants you to be disciplined, have discipline. Allah wants you to sit here and do what we say you should do. Do these practices, do this service, be of service like this, do these awrads. These are all disciplines. Nobody wants a discipline, they want to worship Allah the way they want and be free. But that's not taslim, that's not submission and someone a free willed person is very difficult to taslim like a horse that never had a saddle on it. It just does what it wants, comes when it wants, do what it wants, make its own rules and then Allah describes that horse and says, have you seen someone who makes their own hawa, their own desires their Lord? Whatever they desire that's my Lord. My desire, my Lord is desiring for me to do this and I do that and do this and I do that. So this process of taslim is not easy. So that's why Allah gave these verses, Atiullah means you always command us to obey me. Wa atiya Rasul and obey Sayyidina Muhammad and then Ulul Am. That's why the Ulul Am they have to give you the law of Allah is supreme. The hadith and the laws of Prophet is second to Allah's command and they are the ones who must be instigating those two laws. So the Ulul Am they come to bring you whatever Allah gave is halal, halal, haram, haram. Whatever Prophet came to clarify it, it must be incorporating that and the Ulul Am basically are giving you from that reality. That's why the Ulul Am they can't uh, save you from Allah. They can't say, if Allah going to punish you, we're going to help you because then Allah has verse on them too. But don't take uh, people who think that they can save you from me. There will be nobody who can save you from my rules. So Ulul Am they're not here to change Allah's rules. They're here to teach you Allah what Allah wants from you, what Sayyidina Muhammad wants from you. And they're here to guide people. Clever Ulul Am will teach you in a language that's familiar to you and that's why Prophet taught, teach to people and talk to people according to their level. Lower your wings to talk to them. So some people only want to talk in complicated Arabic terms. You sit with them because that's their language, they have no idea what they're talking about. They have an encyclopedia of Islamic terminology, how does that equate to my language? And that's according to Arabs but that's not what Prophet describes. So he has Ulul Am who speak in Bengali, they speak in Urdu, they speak in English and they speak with that, that being their native tongue that they can convey in this language to that audience what is necessary to be understood. It's not about making everybody Arab. So the Ulul Am are coming in all different shapes and sizes and flavors. So that to reach to people, so people feel familiarity with them. And that's the hikmah and the wisdom and the love and, and the immense rahmah of Allah That they come in all of these different shapes and sizes and they speak the language that is accustomed to those people. And they say, this is what Allah wants from us, nobody can escape it. This is what Sayyidina Muhammad wants from us, nobody can escape that. And this is what we've been told is the best way to implement that in this region considering the difficulties that we are in. 
Prophet described to his companions that, in my time if you leave at least one-tenth of what I'm bringing you will go to Jahannam. They couldn't leave anything that Prophet was bringing. But a nation will come that if they follow one-tenth of what I brought they are Ahlul Paradise, they are the people of paradise. So when you see the tariqahs come with an ease, you know ruqya and, and azima. They are being ordered by Prophet make it easy. They're already not following anything that Allah taught them and Allah want from them. They're not following anything of what Sayyidina Muhammad wanted for them. Who do you think you are that they're going to follow you? So make it easy for people that they be attracted to the way that you're teaching and that you're going with a softness because at any time they just quickly go back and run to shaitan's hands. So with the hikmah they have to guide, with the knowledges that Allah give to them they have to guide. So that's why tariqahs are completely misunderstood by imams and different external ulama who read books memorized books and never been trained in anything, they don't understand this understanding and they think it has to be according to the book exactly like this, exactly like that. But what Allah gave to their heart of then understanding and it is by that book but its understanding is coming in a flavor that is acceptable for the people and the audience that they reach to. So we gave many examples. You, they insist on saying salah, 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 wudu, wudu, wudu. That doesn't mean anything to an audience coming new. But you can reach that same audience just, just by saying energy. Do you want to take away bad energy? Yeah. Do you want to build good energy? Yes. Okay, then that was wudu and this is salah. <laughs> you have to take off bad energy by washing and then you go through the whole process of how energy is good and take away negative energy. And you want to build good energy then you have to sit and make tafakkur and contemplate and build your energy and certain movements that will release your energy. This is salah. It's the same but Allah gave them a hikmah. Ilma laduni wa hikmati bi salihin. that's why there are two wings. Allah give to these servants their wisdoms and as a result gave them hikmah on how to use so that's why they fly. Because they have two wings and Allah send them to do da'wah. Not the angry person who doesn't understand anything, get angry at everyone and just say, you have to do it, that's the way it is, just you do it. So these are different purposes and different da'wah. So their purpose is then now teach you Allah, take away all the bad character, take all the way desires, bring the Allah to be supreme within the heart of their dunya reality. When Allah is sufficient with that then the turuqs come to bring them now into the heavenly reality. Because Allah is saying, you're not going to find me there. You're not going to find a place where Allah is sitting and saying, hi this is Allah I'm going to take you now to, to meet Allah Allah says, I'm not in heaven, I'm not on earth, I'm in the heart of my believer. Means you're going to enter into a Muhammadan light. And in the center of that light is a qalb and qalb has a different understanding what heart is because they don't speak English, they say heart, qalb. So when Allah says, I'm in the qalb of my believer, it's not the qalb that you think and I think but it's the reality of the qaf, lam, ba. So the huruf will give the understanding of what Allah meant by qalb. That to reach to that reality that's the secret of lam and alif and that's the secret of the Zulfiqar which is a lam and an alif and the Zulfiqar was Prophet Wasallam's reality. He gave the Zulfiqar to Imam Ali Salam, say, you be the gate and door to this reality because you have to teach them that don't come with their heads into my reality. So he stand at the gate ulul bab. And that's why the reference in Qur'an to ulul al-bab, the gatekeepers. The gatekeepers are a class of awliyaullah that been given zulfiqar. And as a result of that zulfiqar 
They teach people with these knowledges of inside the city and how to lose your physical head to enter into that city. And that's why then that taweez, somebody emailed that, what, what does this taweez have to do with Naqshbandiya? Naqshbandiya has nothing to do with any taweez for your clarification. Naqshbandiya is a school of esoteric knowledges and realities. Taweezes are realities from the heavens, there's no Naqshbandi taweez. Each of the Naqshbandi shaykhs and the shajara have been given many taweezes for the times and the events and things that are partaking and taking place on this earth. So taweez is a separate issue, Naqshbandiya and its reality is a completely separate reality. Means they can be shaykhs that are not associated with any tariqah because these are from the Muhammadan kingdom, they don't have to be in tariqah. Tariqah is a school in which to train people to reach this reality. But there are 124,000 awliyaullah that are all in the government of Sayyidina Muhammad from their qawf then to the imams and then the, the, the kutubs around, the akhyar, awtad, budar, nujab, nuqab, awtad and akhyar, malaika with jinn. This whole structure is a structure of the Muhammadan government and that's not related to tariqah. They can be in tariqah and they cannot be in tariqah. They can be a high ranking Muhammadan government and have nothing to do, you don't ever find them in a tariqah. But they be ahl dhikr and they may be in the audience of a zikr. So this is completely different realities and Prophet gives to them these taweezes. These taweez meaning give them heavenly writings and inspirations that produce Divinely energies and Divinely realities. That phoenix is a representation of the reality of Sayyidina Mahdi who is a descendant of Imam Ali and has to do with the Zulfiqat and the, the might and majesty that Allah has dressed upon Imam Ali If everyone else is a bird then the Huma, the phoenix and the, the bird of salvation then has to do with the reality of Imam Ali And that's why its crown, its azimat is Allah its face and its head is Muhammadan guidance, these are why it's Mahdiyoon. The Muhammadan Hadi means that is inheriting fully like a common version of the Muhammadan guidance. And his wings means his support is Ya Ali and the swords of Imam Ali are like fire from Jahannam against disbelievers. So the reality of Humayya Rahmah, that's why we sing it in these nasheeds is Ya Ali Humayya Rahmah. That is the phoenix of Allah Sifat al-Rahmah because Haris alaykum bin Mu'mineen who are Rauf rahim that his power and his might is not directed towards humanity. His power and might is to uplift humanity because Allah loved them but his shadeed al-Quwwa, immense powers against shayateen and devils from Allah Divinely powers and azimat. So for the days of difficulty that opening alhamdulillah they said, add that as the taweez and inshaAllah the barakah, <laughs> barakah of that. <laughs> if it works for you alhamdulillah, if it doesn't alhamdulillah people are free to do whatever they like. But it has an immense importance. Somebody emailed and said, oh I want to know something about your name and I saw something and then at the end of that whole vision then I saw this huma, I saw the bird come and give its uh, salutations and he went on to describe some other things. So it's, it's very real, it's a matter of how much the student believes and, and imitates the way. So they imitate it and it has its, its reality for, for the shaykhs and the area that the shaykhs are representing inshaAllah. Long answer <laughs> As Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa rahmatullah Asking for forgiveness and reading durood in this life does it take away the punishment that's meant to be given for us in the grave? What can we do to overcome sinful acts? Sinful acts? Uh, the question was reading durood, making salawats, does that relieve the punishment of the grave? And what can we do to 
relieve sinful acts? Sinful acts. Sinful acts is you we're making tawbah all the time. All of the du'as on the app, uh, tawbah and we have in the fajr awrad with the sultan of istighfars, tawbah to abdin zalimeen. This one was described by Mawlana Shaykh as like the king of, of istighfars, it's in the fajr awrad that uh, du'a madhur from sultan and awliya Mawlana Shaykh Abdul Faiz Daghestani, these are immense, immense uh, du'as of forgiveness. So our life is about we're going to be sinning and we're continuously going to be asking for forgiveness. Your nation never stops sinning and I never stop forgiving them. Allah described to Sayyidina Muhammad your nation never gets tired of sinning and I never get tired of forgiving them because of the love that Allah has for Prophet So this is a matter of this is going to happen anyways. But what's important on these days is to build that relationship and understanding that this, this relationship with Prophet is essential on our path. That in, in my time of difficulty my companionship that I have to be always in that understanding of making my salawats, asking for Prophet to be present with me in every time of happiness and in difficulty. And the, the most difficult that humanity can even understand is the grave. So then this is the time in which Allah gave to awliyaullah go for seclusion. But now for the nation they don't have that understanding of seclusion so they all accept itikaf because Allah put that, Prophet put that there that at least these 10 days when Allah is giving you all these rewards then make an understanding at least try to observe a portion of the time, try to do some meditation and reflection. And if you're being guided by the shaykhs then they're saying also focus on the fire and as min nar to be free from this fire Ya Rabbi by my presence with Sayyidina Muhammad and the presence of Prophet with me and make this loving relationship and salawats and, and asking him, asking Prophet that who will help me in my time of difficulty. When you're meditating look at the sadness around the world, look at the suffering around the world. We used to say that uh, in, in the teaching when you would watch the news and you would see them how they're torturing Muslims in Burma and then they were Abu Qraib, they were te tearing them up and holding them and torturing them. Why don't you look at those pictures and say, that's you? Why you think you're, you're, you're better than the people of Burma and what they did to them and how they're doing to them, what they're doing right now in China to people that they came and they said, oh you're Muslim and took them and who knows what they're doing to them. So then when you meditate you look at those pictures and ask Prophet if they come to do that to me what am I going to do? How will I defend myself? How will I… How, who will I call to that please be with me in my, in my time of need, put your love upon me, make me to, to feel my nearness to you and then and cry out, cry out and asking Prophet to please put your light upon me, put your your support upon me, Sultan and Nasira that Allah Ya the Sultan who has authority that grant me an authority, grant me a light, grant me a, a nearness to you. Before difficulty comes, before people are coming to, to harm myself and my family, grant me your support, grant me your nearness. So this is the time in which to make the plea not when you know they're at your door. And that's why don't turn off the news and think, oh that's far away, it's everywhere. Everywhere is the oppression and difficulty and, and all sorts of uh, badness and uh, you know horrific characteristics. So this is the time in which to ask Allah that please in my, my time of difficulty and I see all these difficulties. I'm asking to be close to Prophet I'm asking the Prophet najat to be upon me, your nearness upon me and that your love be upon me. So many times you would see and look for the sandal and the holy foot of Prophet To see the sandal, a beautiful foot and that my head is on your foot that please I won't lift my head until I feel you're, you're, you're happy and content with me and that your support is to be supporting me inshaAllah. 
So these are all an immense time to meditate and contemplate and to make that relationship and to leave heedlessness that, oh this, this everything is great, everything is fantastic. No, it's not fantastic, everything is in difficulty, inshaAllah. As Alaikum Sayyidi, how can, I gu- how can I guarantee that Prophet Muhammad will come to my grave if I am in difficulty? Oh, you just answered. That answered that one already. <laughs> you, you can guarantee, how do I guarantee that Prophet will come to my grave in my time of difficulty? You, you can guarantee that yourself right now, why do you have to wait for the time of the grave? That's the thing. You, you know what you're doing, you know how much you're committed, you know what part of your life is, is focusing on this reality. If this is a part-time entertainment for you, then I would imagine in your grave it will be a part-time entertainment for them. Make sense? Yeah, you don't take it, you think it's kind of like funny, it's okay occasionally. Then you go into the grave, they'll think, oh this that guy who thought it was just like a part-time thing, <laughs> just wait. We'll wait until we, we go there to see what's going on. <laughs> so it's a matter of what you put into it is what you get out of it. That's what we teach our children, then all of them are just teaching us. You know, you don't put anything into it, what are you expecting to get out of it? So those whom they have sakina, why somebody would have sakina and tranquility into their heart? They did everything they can. They're doing every day everything they can and how can they do more? They don't have more hands. There's some people that you wish you could multiply them because they're doing so much and they can't do more. That then Allah has to give to them in their heart sakina. That at night I did my best but when I know I'm not doing anything of what I could be doing, uh, then everyone has their own limit, everyone has what they understand of their inability. If Allah gave a person and we have emails from people who are in physical handicaps, what can they do? Pray. Allah doesn't expect for them to get up and to do physical things, that's okay. Allah gave everyone a limitation, within that limitation what is it that you can do? Because maybe with you whom they're physically not well, Allah accepts your du'a, keep praying for them, Ah Rabbi pray for my shaykhs, pray for the, their da'wah, pray for these things. Everybody can do something in which you feel, I was content, I can't move my legs but I can type, I'm going to start doing this, I'm going to do that. There's like an immense fire of dajjal and this work is like you know throwing raindrops on it, it's not going to extinguish it. We said many times you know when the ansel, the fire of Nimrod and the immensity of the fire that could be seen from you know hundreds of miles away and the ant was taking a water, run, 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 he couldn't even get too close to the fire and <laughs> spit on the, <laughs> on the fire, it evaporated before it hit that. And awliya who, can, who could talk to creatures, if the ant is coming back and say, what are you doing? The water you're throwing on that immense fire is but they're going to put the fire. See, I wasn't planning on putting the fire out but I wasn't going to die saying that a Nabi of Allah is being burned and I did nothing and stood by. Means this happening now, this world is on fire, how are you going to meet Allah say, I did nothing with the fire that I saw coming? So our life was is about do something, you, even you think it's not going to do anything it's not our business but our business was to, to, to you know die trying, that we're out to put the da'wah, out to spread the love, out to, to give people hope to the best of their ability to reach towards these realities. The rest is in Allah's hand but you can't see that fire and just sit at home and do nothing. And then when it comes into your backyard you're just with congratulations. So this oppression and zulamat and darkness is everywhere. I think the Naqshbandiya shuyukh. The immensity of the power that Allah has given to them completely divulged and opened up the Wahhabi movement and Salafi movement and destroyed their movement and whatever they were planning to do on a nefarious hidden level, Mawlana Shaykh he completely obliterated and opened up that reality where there's not a place on earth that doesn't know that name where before nobody knew its name. It was like a hidden curse that nobody understood what that, that madhab was. Naqshbandiya opened that up, there was no other shaykhs daring to talk about these things. And Maulid was something that nobody could do, especially in the Americas. 
20 years ago when we started. They were fighting to get a, a Mawlid against the Isna and Ikna conferences in America. Now Mawlid is, is so present that the ones who don't do Mawlid are in trouble because why are you not doing Mawlid? <laughs> These are Naqshbandi awliya that went and, and put out their books, put out their knowledges and what Allah gave of support, they changed the whole the image of, of what's happening on this earth. So what you think you could never do, it's just enough for Allah to see if people are committed and trying. إِذَا جَاءَ نَصْرُ اللَّهِ وَالْفَاتِ When Allah give His support, His happiness then miracles can occur. So alhamdulillah. Never give up hope and we try our best and keep keep pushing and keep pushing and then think that how we're going to meet Allah saying, we saw all this ignorance and we did nothing with our life, with our money, with our family, with our resources, we did nothing. InshaAllah Subhana rabbika rabbil izzati amma yasifoon wa salaamun al mursaleen walhamdulillahi rabbil alameen bi hurmati Muhammad al-Mustafa wa bi siri Surat al-Fatiha.